Hi, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the programming languages that economists and social scientists should learn. Uh, in economics, uh, a lot of things are becoming very quantitative. So computation has become a very central tool in economics, right, in the modern days economics, uh, be it uh, building dynamic equilibrium models in macroeconomics, or be it building models in industrial organization, uh, or in game theory, uh, or even, you know, estimating by simulation, or building econometric models. Uh, in all these cases, we need to use a lot of computation to be able to do things in economics. It's all the same situation in other social sciences, social, such as in sociology, in anthropology, uh, in political science, and so on. So, uh, computation, therefore, is so important. And in the modern world, we use computer for that because hand computation uh, is not possible these days. Well, it is possible, but it uh, it is much less powerful compared to a computer. So we have to learn programming. So what are the programming languages that are very suitable for social scientists and economists in particular? Well, before that, I'll talk in brief about why should social scientists learn programming. Often it is perceived that scientists and engineers should learn programming, but programming is not very important for social scientists. But that's not the case, especially in the modern world. Programming has become very important even for social scientists. And what are the benefits of it? Well, you will do more uh, useful research by learning programming because you will be able to you know, build a much more complicated model if you have some command over programming, right? You can go beyond uh, the traditional models. You can take models from uh, science, different branches of science. You can take models from machine learning and apply it in uh, social science if you have some command uh, over programming. You can also communicate better by using programming. So data visualization is one good thing uh, with respect to communicating better. So if you know how to program the computer, you can actually have better communication because you will be able to, uh, yeah, you know, create a lot of good graphs and charts and so on. Uh, so you can, you can communicate better. And then automating mundane tasks. That's very important thing. A lot of things that uh, gets done in research can be automated very well so that you'll be, you'll be able to focus more on the research part rather than doing this mundane th things. So you can use programming in order to automate that. Then you have better job opportunity, in, in, especially in the industry. So if uh, you are unable to get a job in academia or you are not interested in academia, then uh, in the industry, you have plenty of opportunity if you have uh, programming skills uh, in your CV. So that's something to keep in mind. So these are some of the programming languages we'll be discussing. The first programming language that I'm going to discuss is R programming very famous among statisticians also nowadays uh, very famous uh, among industry practitioners but it was uh, yeah it was created by statisticians and also uh, quite used uh, in economics but uh, not so much in other social science disciplines but it's very easy to use so anyone with a uh, basic idea about mathematics can you know use uh, r programming uh, it, it was originally created by statistician and very friendly even for uh, social scientists. So you don't have to uh, be a programming geek in order to be able to learn R programming. And there are lots of econometrics and statistical packages uh, in R programming. So it's very useful for economists as well as for other social scientists. The next one is Python. Uh, well, okay, one thing I forgot to tell you is the R is also open source, so it's free. You can download uh, easily. Uh, then Python. Python is also open source, it's free. Um, it's very popular in the industry, uh, also popular among scientists and engineers, but not very popular among uh, social scientists. But social scientists were working in some areas, very quantitative branches of political science or economics. They're also using Python these days. For example, in one of the projects I worked with a professor of, from uh, Imperial uh, College of London, uh, he was a professor of economics. Uh, he used Python to extract uh, data from uh, thousands of websites, 
right that kind of work you cannot do using traditional statistical software well you can do uh, but it will be uh, very difficult so python is very useful there where we have to collect data from very unconventional sources such as websites uh, yeah uh, it's a bit less statistical compared to uh, r for example but now a lot of statisticians are also using python so they're also creating python packages somewhat difficult to learn for a beginner uh, so initially it could be a bit intimidating but it's actually not that difficult actually compared to r uh, and somewhat slow also uh, this is something not very uh, yeah not very bothering for people who are working with small data sets but you know with high computation high numerical computation this might be an issue especially for macroeconomics and quantity finance people yeah the next one is julia it's a fairly a new programming compared to python and r uh, it's, it brings the best of r and python i've never used julia but what I've heard from people is that it's actually, uh, it's the best of both worlds, best of R and Python. R is statistical software. It has got lots of statistical packages, whereas Python is general purpose programming. That means you can do a lot more than just statistics uh, using Python. And in Julia, you can use, you can do both, right? It's uh, faster than R and Python. That's uh, one other advantage. Um, yeah, it's also open source, so you can download it freely. Then SaaS. SaaS is not open source. It's a proprietary software. So you have to pay money to SaaS uh, organizations. So the company SaaS. Uh, it's very economist friendly. There are lots of good packages uh, from economic metrics and statistics. Uh, so you can, you can very well use uh, SaaS in academia as well as outside of academia. So SaaS is something that's very well used in academia as well as in industry. But it's not free. That's another problem. Then C++. Well, C++ is very, very, uh, so to say, programming type uh, uh, programming language. As in, uh, someone has to be a hardcore programmer to be able to use uh, C++. But it's also used uh, in, the, uh, in the academia uh, by scientists, but also by many social scientists. But uh, it's, it's, you have to be a bit programming savvy to be able to use C++, but it's quite fast. If you have high numerical computation to do, then uh, it's, it's the language to be used. Uh, it's very helpful in numerical computation. There are lots of good packages, mathematical, statistical packages uh, uh, in C++. It's used in quantity finance. So people from financial economics use a lot. Somewhat difficult to learn, as I said. Then MATLAB and uh, Mathematica. So they're similar softwares. These are both are proprietary um, and they have lots of good support uh, similar to SAS. Uh, very good, not free uh, and easy to learn and use. So Mathematica and MATLAB are alternatives to SAS. Uh, but SAS is more used in the industry than MATLAB and Mathematica. So you have more job option in the industry in SAS as compared to MATLAB and Mathematica. And then Octave. It's uh, very similar to MATLAB actually. It's kind of a, a free version of MATLAB. Uh, MATLAB is not free. You have to pay money for license, but Octave is free, so you can freely download it. Um, it's also uh, used by scientists, not so much by social scientists, but uh, you can also try. If you like it, I think it's a good alternative to R in my view. Then there are some other computational tools which we cannot categorize into programming languages because they're not programming. So to say, you don't have to write programs there, but you can do lots of things that you can do using Python and R, right? Uh, pretty much uh, almost all things except very few things. There are, of, of course, some uh, downside of using these softwares, but you can certainly use Stata, SPSS, EVU. Stata is very famous among social scientists uh, so is SPSS, EVU as well, uh, but these are tools, not programming languages. So they give you less flexibility, right? Um, for a lot of things you cannot do using this software. So you have to then use R and Python. Um, so these are some of the softwares that 
you can learn uh, if you are not familiar with programming or simply not willing to learn programming because you know you simply use these tools and these are there are you know drop and down so you can simply use those features of these tools and get things done you don't have to learn programming but it's a serious limitation by the way because these softwares are not used uh, outside of uh, academia so your cv will not carry uh, as much value as some someone with uh, uh, skills in r and, and python so to conclude social scientists should learn and must learn programming languages at least one programming language and of the languages that i discussed to me i think r python and octave these are the three programming languages uh, that are very suitable for social science research also outside of academia right like if you want to work as an economist in banking you will have to use python there or r programming there therefore it's very important that you learn at least one of these three languages r and python preferably but julia and octave if you like them thank you so much